Okay, welcome back. Uh, there is one small point about this problem, uh, which uh, a few students asked me a question, and I think I should have emphasized that properly, which I did not. Just note one thing, that we had implicitly taken that a platform is perfectly horizontal, and there is no tilt in the platform. And the reason clearly being is that, that this spacing DE is the same as this spacing AB, okay, 300. What does that mean? that the horizontal distance between E and B is the same as the horizontal distance between D and A, because of which that the vertical displacement of point D will be the same as vertical virtual displacement of point D, and the platform will not tilt. If the top distance were different than 300, then you will see that there will be a tilt in the platform, and you have to add that component also when you find out what is the work done on the, uh, on the, the mass which is uh, work done by the mass uh, which is uh, resting on the platform. Okay, so this one point uh, I forgot to mention, but it is very important that the top distance 300 is the same as the bottom distance 300 because of which both point D and point E have the same vertical displacement. Is it clear? Okay, so let us move on <coughs> to this problem, okay, which is very similar to one of the problems we had done in class. And what we will see is that with principle of virtual work, okay the entire problem becomes extremely easy. The mechanism is as follows. We have a platform, okay, a platform which on one side has a slot, okay, there is a frictionless slot and the platform can move up and down that slot, okay. So this is a vertical slot, okay, this is the figure I drew, okay, so I could not exactly draw a vertical slot, but it's a vertical slot and the platform is free to slide up and down through this slot, okay. Now, this platform can be hoisted up or lowered down by this mechanism. There are three members, one, two, three, which are connected to roller and these rollers can slide inside the platform such that if you increase this angle theta, okay, this entire assembly goes up, these rollers can slide and the platform can appropriately move up. If this angle theta is lowered, then the wheels will slide like this, the platform will come down okay and the entire mechanism is lowered now this entire assembly is supported by a hydraulic cylinder all the dimensions are given to us okay this distance this epsilon everything is known so in principle we know what is the orientation of this hydraulic cylinder ab with respect to the horizontal what we are asked is that given all the dimensions of this problem and when theta is equal to 60 what should be the force that should be provided by this uh, hydraulic cylinder to so as to keep this assembly in equilibrium. Now, as far as the specifics of this problem is concerned, we have mentioned that what is the diameter of this thing, okay, uh, and so that if we know the diameter, we need to find out what is the internal pressure that will give us P times the area will be equal to the force acting at point A. So, as far as the mechanics of the problem is concerned, this hydraulic cylinder is exerting a force at point A along this direction and keeping this mechanism in equilibrium, you increase this boom, the rod, uh, the assembly goes up, you decrease the size of this boom, the assembly goes down, and when theta is equal to 60, all the configurations are given to you, all the angles are known, and can we use principle of virtual work to find out in terms of the force in the hydraulic cylinder and all the other dimensions that what is the, uh, 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 that what is the force required, okay, to keep this weight, okay, which is given 5000 Newton in equilibrium. Is the problem clear? Problem statement, it is very similar to the problem we had done earlier. Only thing is that if you recall, the problem we had done in 2D equilibrium, there was a two force member connecting one link to the platform to resist any horizontal forces, whereas in this problem, that job is done by this vertical slot, that any horizontal movement is prevented by the vertical slot, the platform can only move up or down, and the internal wheels can slide to raise it up or down. Is the mechanism clear? Now, this problem, if you want to solve it using equilibrium, okay, we can do it. The same way we had done the problem uh, earlier uh, towards the end of the class uh, in 2D equilibrium. But what I'm asking is that, what is the easiest way, okay, uh, or what is the, uh, what are the virtual displacement that we can provide to this system that we can find out the virtual work done by the 
the mass on the top here and the horizontal cylinder such that we can say that the system to be in equilibrium and the virtual work should be equal to zero and we can find out what is the force in the hydraulic cylinder. Okay, so what are the virtual displacements that we should apply? Or virtual displacement, rotation, combination, whatever. Yes, so angular rotation, note that these three rods are all parallel to each other. So if you apply a small rotation theta here, delta theta, we want to apply the same rotation to all the three rods such that all of them remain as a parallelogram, this distance does not change. Okay, so far so good, we apply a small rotation delta theta to all these inclined rods. Now if we apply a small rotation delta theta to any of the rods, what will be the vertical motion of this entire assembly? How much will it move up by? 2L, 2L cos theta delta theta will the entire assembly move upwards by. So the work done by the gravity will be minus W, okay, or if you reduce the theta, then it will be plus W, increase the theta, it will be minus W. So we know what is the vertical displacement of the platform if this rod is rotated by a small amount delta theta, then this entire assembly will go up by delta theta into this horizontal distance, which is 2L cos theta. Fine, that point is clear. Now, how do we find out what is the work done by the hydraulic cylinder? If we, hydraulic cylinder is a two force member, let us replace that by an equivalent force. So you tell me, yes, uh, how do we get uh, the force in the hydraulic cylinder? Only y component, x component, what do we do? Only y component. Why? There is no displacement. No, but look at this hydraulic cylinder. This hydraulic cylinder AB, you can replace by a force along AB. Let us say there is a compressive force in the hydraulic cylinder, then this can be replaced by a force acting towards A along direction AB. We want to find out what is the component of displacement along that. Right? Now let us say if this angle is alpha, this angle the cylinder makes is alpha, what will be the horizontal component that this of the virtual displacement, if you rotate this assembly, A will have a component in this direction. How do we find out that component? So what we do is that we just extend this line from this point, drop a perpendicular. And what we need to know is what is the perpendicular distance of a line which is perpendicular from this point to the cylinder AB. Now if this angle is alpha, the total angle is what, theta plus alpha? So simply the displacement along the hydraulic cylinder will be equal to L, uh, L sine theta plus alpha into delta theta. So if I show this in this uh, figure, what you will see is this, if this is alpha, then this angle will be theta plus alpha. What we want is just this vertical distance or from point A drop a vertical line okay, along this direction, what is the distance of that? It will be L sine theta plus alpha. So when we provide a virtual rotation like this delta theta, at this point where the force is acting on the hydraulic cylinder, the displacement in this direction will be simply given by L sine theta plus alpha into delta theta, done. And alpha ka direction you can easily find out why because all the dimensions are given to you. We can find out what is the value of alpha. Is the, is the question clear? Is the, is, the, uh, is the approach clear? Is there any doubt, any question about this? Please ask. So what we want is this, okay, if I repeat again, if I repeat again, then let us look at this central rod. This force acting by the hydraulic cylinder, we are replacing by FH. Now if I zoom onto this rod, we are rotating this rod by a small virtual displacement delta theta about point A. And we want to find out that for that small rotation, delta theta about point A, what will be the displacement at point O along direction of FH? And if you just do the geometry, what do we need to do? From A, you drop a perpendicular line to O and find out what is that distance multiplied by delta theta will be the corresponding displacement. But this angle, if this is alpha, this is theta, this angle will be theta plus alpha and L sine theta plus alpha will be that distance of A and a perpendicular line to this. Okay, yes please. Yes, sir, if I think in that way that uh, from the ground to the point A, the length is L. From what, sir, think about it, okay. From, from what the point ground A? to point A, the length is L along the... Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Now, if we give a small displacement delta theta, hmm. so from perpendicular along this line, the displacement is L delta theta, that we can say. Perpendicular to which line? Perpendicular to that inclined line. Perpendicular to this line? Right. The Perpendic displacement is delta theta. And then you yeah. can do that thing also. You can take that and, and take the component, the component of, of that, that in that case. But fine. In that case, the distance coming is different, na? Same. It will come out to be the same. No, obviously, that is L delta theta and the uh, cos component of that. But what happens is that, that when you look at a perpendicular distance, that cos becomes sine. Okay. Because that angle you have to look at, okay, it becomes the, the vertical angle there. Okay. So, this and this. So, simple thing is, for example, just let's look at it this way. Let me move to this slide. It will come out to be exactly the same. Okay, what you are saying is fine. If you look at this line, this angle is theta. This is L. L delta theta. This is theta. Okay, this will be theta. Right. So, because of which, how much is this distance will be? Delta cos theta, which will be L cos theta delta theta will be, will be the displacement in the vertical direction, which is the same as doing this. Okay. So, whatever way you do, you will get the same answer. Sir, yes, actually, please. Actually, I was telling the same thing. If yeah. we take the components of P, Fine. That will be a, I think it will be a better method than this. I will tell you one thing. Okay. So, better method, lesser method, again, it is a idiosyncratic thing. Okay. You may find that comfortable. All right. So, it is fine. All right. Okay. So, I am not saying be that better or not better. Sorry about that. Okay. No, no, no. There is nothing to be sorry about. Okay. Because some are more comfortable with that. Okay. Some, uh, some people may find that other one more comfortable. But why was this, why looking at the perpendicular distance and going for it, why is that beneficial? That if you look here, you will see especially this problem, you will see that all of them should have the same distance. It's just the horizontal distance times delta theta. Change, change coordinate. Oh, if you come to this problem, I don't need to find out any angles, nothing. If you really want to use the method that you are suggesting, I have to draw this line, find the angle, take component and do delta theta. But in this case, for finding out vertical displacement, I just need this distance. Easier, easier here. Okay, it's not a question of easier, it depends on the problem and depends on, for example, what state of, uh, like what you are comfortable with. But if you look here, this is like a general approach where you know that all the points along that, it only distance on this dis depends on this distance find it. But you are right, like there will be some other problems in which what you are suggesting may be beneficial. But both are equivalent. Thank you, sir. Okay, so as somebody, what they suggested is that, that at point O, which is equivalent, you know that the displacement is perpendicular to this line. So then just take that displacement and find out what is the component along this. Both are the same thing. Whatever you are comfortable with, you do it and you will see that whatever you do, the answer will come out to be only this. It will be L sin theta plus alpha into delta theta will be the virtual displacement at point O because of this rotation. And now you know what is the virtual displacement along the hydraulic cylinder, virtual displacement for the weight. Just do the virtual work principle and you will immediately get the answer that uh, the force will be given by W cos theta divided by sin of theta plus alpha. Just write down one equation, you will see that the force in the hydraulic cylinder is W cos theta by uh, sin theta plus alpha. How do we get alpha? All the dimensions are known from here. Okay, You can immediately find what is tan of alpha. From that, you will get alpha. Theta is already given. Plug in all the values. You will find out force is, I think, 2.08 in the whatever units uh, they are given. 2.08 pascals, if I am not mistaken, is the numerical value of the force. But the formula is just this. Any questions? So what you see is that, that by using principle of virtual work, if you try to solve this problem using conventional equilibrium, first of all, this is a statically indeterminate system because there are three rods there. So you cannot find out force in all the rods. But as far as finding the force in the hydraulic cylinder is concerned, it is immaterial. Okay? So that is the power of principle of virtual work that you immediately can figure out that if a mechanism can be generated with respect to a particular force, you are done. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. <coughs> work done is equals to force into displacement. Force into displacement in that direction. In that direction. Yes. So our aim is to find out displacement in the direction Along of the force. Along the direction of the force. That is our goal. Yes. Period. So we have to concentrate over the uh, displacement in the direction of force only. That's what we did. Yes. Na? What yes. we are doing over here, first of all, we are finding the displacement along the 
line which is perpendicular to that one. But that and then we are resolving, so it no, becomes no, no, complicated. No, 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 no. If you find out the displacement like this directly, hmm. then you automatically get what is the displacement along this. Because this is what? This distance is nothing but from point A, I have drawn a line perpendicular to O. So that distance into delta theta is nothing but the virtual displacement along this, straight away. Uh, but uh, we require in y direction only because no, we don't need y direction. We need from the top, which we already got. Uh, even at point A also, only displacement. Point A, you don't need displacement in y direction. Why? Because the only force acting at point A yes. is the force from the hydraulic cylinder, which is inclined at an angle alpha. Yes. And that is y component only. No, because there is no displacement in x direction. No, 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 no. The force is acting in an inclined direction, right? Okay, the force is inclined, it is not like this. So, work done, so displacement, now you can think about it this way, x and y directions, what the x and y take, it's my choice. If I take x in this direction, y perpendicular to this, then what I want, I don't care about what is the displacement in the y direction, I only want force in the x direction, where my x and y axis are oriented such that this is x and this is y. You can do it either ways, okay, whatever way you do, you want what is the component of virtual displacement along the direction of the force. That's all you want and that's what we have done here. In that sum, sir, through yes. point A, uh -huh. we can draw perpendicular on the ground. You draw perpendicular to the ground, yes, okay. fine. That becomes a right angle triangle. Yes. Hypotenuse is known, angle is known. Yeah. We can find out height of the triangle. Yeah. Uh, so, we can find out uh, dy in that direction. dy is equals to L height cos theta. Height will not give you dy, theta. first of all. Height will give you dx. The, the horizontal projection, which is L cos theta, will give you the displacement in the y direction. But, but dx is not required, no, sir, because there is no displacement along x-axis, no, because see, forces see, are in y direction. No, so what is happening here is that, that we are deciding that this is not required when what is not required is like the entire discussion about dx and dy really is a moot point, because what we only need is a displacement along this direction. Okay, and if you are still not convinced, okay, we can continue this after the, after the lecture, okay. Sir, in the second free body diagram, the both no, the no, lines are… No, not a free body diagram. Again, in the active force diagram. Okay, it's not a free Sorry. body diagram. In the second diagram… Because I have not removed all the forces. Right. All the, uh, the two lines at O and at A, it is… both are inclined lines at alpha angle. Yeah, so this line is pa parallel to this. Okay, actually, I should have done a much sensible thing. Just take this point O and drop a perpendicular line. So, these was… these diagrams were drawn in my younger days, okay. When, for example, I was not experienced, okay. but. What you know is that from A you drop a perpendicular line, okay, that would have been much more convenient. It's too much work again to do everything, okay, this was already there, okay. But this distance is the same as if I, from a point A, I drop a perpendicular to O. Why? Because this line and this line I have drawn to be parallel to each other, okay. So, easiest would be you take point A, drop a perpendicular to this, okay, and straight away you are done, okay. This is circuitous way of doing it, okay, but now I know better. Yes, any other questions? Okay, so let us move on. Okay, that's a simple problem, it's a much simpler problem, but of a different type. What we are asked, okay, but you note that the last problem, principle of virtual work, for example, like the beauty and the power of that method is apparent when we solve the last two problems. If you try doing those problems using standard approach, it is not at all clear what free body diagrams, it's not difficult, not impossible, but here, by just knowing how the mechanism can happen, we impose that particular virtual displacement and you are done literally in one equation, okay. Now let us come to a simpler problem, this is much simpler, uh, a very simple assembly. You have an inclined plane which is taken to be frictionless and this, this weight is supported by a string passing over a system of pulleys, okay. String goes up, there is weight for this pulley. There is another weight for this pulley which is providing a counter that there is a tension in the string and ultimately there is a load Q that I apply at the bottom. And what we are asking is that determine Q for the equilibrium of the systems if the, uh, if the pulleys are frictionless, okay, this slope is also frictionless and all the masses are given. Use principle of virtual work, okay, because we are doing virtual work. You can easily do this even with equilibrium, but just for the purposes of demonstration, how do we do this by using principle of virtual work? Quantities W3, W1, W2 are given. We need to find out Q in terms of those quantities, no friction at any point of contact or any surface of contact. Okay, so you realize that, for example, if I give it a virtual displacement to this block upwards, a small delta displacement upwards, what will move? We don't want to extend the string. We want the length of the string to remain the same. 
because if we extend a string, then the internal force in the string should also do work. So we don't want to do that. So we want the length of the string to remain the same. Just move this block upward by small distance delta. What will happen? This entire string, this will go down. W2 will go down by how much? Same delta. But now suppose there were no support here. Then what will happen? This will penetrate inside by delta. Q will move down by delta. But now this cannot penetrate inside. So I have to lift this entire assembly by an amount delta, but because of that, the, that part of string will go to this side. So delta plus delta, two delta will how much the Q will move down by. And so if this moves up by delta, this will move down by two delta. So what are the virtual work done? Upwards delta, so W3 sine theta, okay, minus into delta, W2, okay, downwards, displacement of how much? This same delta is in here. So delta into W2, plus 2 delta into Q should be equal to 0, delta cancels out, you get a relation between W1, W2 and Q. The W1 at the top doesn't do any work because there is no displacement as far as this scheme is concerned. Idea clear? Okay, so we'll solve a very small problem. So what do we have is we have a simple mechanism composed entirely here of two force members. So two force member, no, 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 sorry, sorry. So one two force member, second two force member, a whole rod, another second uh, second complete rigid body pinned at this point. Again, these two two force members. And in these two members, we apply a force of P and P in this direction. All the dimensions are given to you, L1, 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 L2, 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 L2. And you are asked to find out what should be the force Q that is required to keep this assembly in equilibrium. Or I can turn the argument around and say that if this Q is given, what should be the two forces required to keep this assembly in equilibrium at this given theta? Now this problem is very easily solved using the calculus approach. Okay, that what you can do is take your coordinate system at this point. Say this is a fixed point because in the calculus approach, what you need is a, you need a point which is fixed, which is not moving. So at this fixed point, have a coordinate system x, y. And then write down the coordinates of these two points. Now what are we interested? We are interested in the vertical displacement at this point, vertical displacement of this point. So we write down the y coordinate of these two. And at this point, we are interested in the horizontal displacement. Why? Because the work is, force is horizontal. So the work will only be done for the horizontal displacement. So we can write down in terms of the angle theta, what is the x coordinate of point, uh, of this end point? What are the y coordinates of these two points? And then we use the differentiation approach, okay? Take the derivative. Then as a function of delta theta, we immediately know what is the vertical displacement of point P, what is the vertical displacement here, what is the horizontal displacement here as a function of small delta theta, and then we can apply the principle of virtual work. So we can write it this way, and we'll immediately see that y of this point is L1 sine theta, clearly. Now, before, there is one point which I did not emphasize. I have used a degree of freedom which is theta. Is this a one degree of freedom problem or is it a multiple degree of freedom problem? If I change that theta, will all, uh, can I get the configuration of the entire assembly by just knowing one angle? Perfect, okay. So just one theta will immediately ensure that I know the entire configuration. So it's a one degree of freedom problem. So I can write down all the coordinates in terms of theta, y a L1 sine theta, so delta yA will be L1 cos theta delta theta. Note it is consistent that if you increase delta theta, which means delta theta is positive, this will go up. So delta y is positive. yB will be equal to minus L1 sin theta. So delta yB equal to minus L1 cos theta delta theta. So if delta theta increases, this will go down. Now note that in this approach, you don't have to worry about like if something is going down or up. What you just say that my my x coordinate, y coordinate is up, my x coordinate is sideways, this delta y a is only upwards or only sideways. If it is negative, it just means that uh, it is not in this direction, it is in the opposite direction. But you don't need to explicitly take care of the signs. It will be automatically here. So in that case, this is minus p, this is plus p. What is the x coordinate of point c? L1 cos theta plus L1 cos theta plus L2 cos theta plus L2 cos theta. So it will be 2 L1 plus L2 cos theta. So delta xc 
will be minus 2 L1 plus L2 sin theta delta theta. We note clearly that if delta theta increases, point C move inwards and that is why the negative sign. Then use principle of virtual work, point A load is what minus P because we are using coordinate system. So minus P delta Y A, no change in any sign, plus P, P is upwards, Y is upwards. So plus P delta Y B minus Q, now Q is up, opposite to the assumed direction of X. So this is minus Q into delta XC and with all the signs put in these values and when you solve this simple equation you will see that P is equal to Q L1 plus L2 by L1 tan theta, okay straightforward or if P is given to you, you want to find out Q, you just change uh, this appropriate equation and you can get Q in terms of P. Now this approach in this case for example again this is an R that when to decide that you use the calculus approach or you use the, the more physical approach that we have discussed so far, in this case the calculus approach is much simple. And especially it is good to use because we have a nice, nice fixed point here, okay. This A is a fixed point so you can put a co to nice coordinate axis. And what you will see is that why this mechanism is so good that I can have many, many, many in huge number of triangles, okay. For example, in a scissor jack or for example, you know the toy snakes, you push on it and the snake goes out, okay. Those kind of mechanisms, okay. Or scissor jacks which are used to raise and lower assemblies, okay. There are so many different components if you try to use equilibrium for this, okay. You have to analyze so many free body diagrams it is very likely to make errors but using this kind of an approach you will see that the answer comes in one shot and very less prone to errors. Yes please? Which equation? This one? We are giving displacement of force Q towards left or right? No, in this approach for example in this coordinate approach where you write the coordinates, signs are automatically taken care of. If you decide that this is X, this is Y, okay, that, that is okay. automatically if negative sign comes means your displacement in this direction, positive means yes. this direction and same for Y. And force also we have to take it plus or minus depending on if it is consistent or opposite to the coordinate axis. Yes. yes. Uh, direction of uh, uh, motion and the direction of force is same, then work done is positive. It will come automatically here. Okay. So same thing is there. Ah. P delta y, y A okay. that is minus. Why minus? Because at point A huh. force is downward. So I have to take that as minus P. Yes. And displacement is upward. No. Upwards, according to this convention, these are all upward values. So it is not upward, it will automatically be negative. So whatever you get here, you just have to plug that here. By definition, it is upwards. If it is negative by some reason, for some reason, then it means that it was downwards. But that you do not have to do double correction. It automatically happens in this approach. Huh. That is why I am uh, telling sir. Yeah. <coughs> Suppose that uh, Q is moving towards left, then A will move upward. Delta Y is upward in the direction, force is downward in direction. Huh. So according to uh, that, first one should be positive, second one should be negative B ka, and Q should be positive. First one should be negative by, by your convention. Because work is downward, displacement is upward. If I increase theta, point A goes up. So point A is going up but the load is downward. So the work should be negative in that way yes. and that is automatically taken care of if you just follow sign convention. Huh. When theta increases, Q is moving towards left. But we are talking about P right here. We are talking about P. But uh, 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 sign convention has to be same for sure. Yes, yes. Yes. So uh, when uh, C is moving towards left. Yes. So displacement of a Q is dx. Is inwards. Huh. So both are, uh, that should be positive but, then. No, no, no. So that's what is happening now. So Xc, if delta theta is positive, Xc will be negative in this direction. But note here that the work done is minus Q. Why? Because Q is in this direction. So minus Q into minus. So work done will be positive if delta theta increases. Sir. Yes. I think there is a mistake in this. In it which is, one? It should be plus P into delta Ya. Uh, that's why I am telling. No, 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 no. It is fine. There is no mistake. Minus is fine because just look now. No, it is okay, sir. If delta theta is positive, if delta theta is positive, delta y a is upwards, positive, but p is downward. So work done is negative. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, it's fine. There is no issue with this one. E sir, you I use hope. that sign convention in upper one. You are putting negative value over there. You that's sign why. convention both for the forces yes, yes. as well for the virtual displacements. Yes, sir. And then you don't have to explicitly again go and decide the signs. Whatever sign comes, you have to just put them mindlessly. Incline, will it be in equilibrium? If Q is inclined, it won't be in equilibrium. Very good point. Then because this assembly is not supported, I need to put a roller there. 
okay strictly speaking i need to put a roller at c then if q whatever you do that reaction will take care of that load but the procedure remains the same why because according to this procedure the c cannot move upwards but you are right to be perfectly consistent i should put a roller at c if you read the second equation it yeah, seems I correct it just now yeah it seems correct yeah it's, it From is the correct. first equation it seems that the q should be minus q should be plus and second p should be minus no because if i am using the convention p is acting in the downward direction yes. so i should take that as minus p okay i should take that as minus p the first you are because, because uh, p is acting because i should use the sign convention both for the forces as well as the displacement think about it both for forces and displacement you use it consistently you will get appropriate equation think okay so why don't we now move on with the tutorial Thank you.